9% mu. 200, minus 11. 150, minus 7. Minus 6, 120 feet, minus 6. Minus 5, 100 feet at 5. 9% mu. To the untrained eye, it looked like just another rock. But its large crystals, formed in pairs called twinning, showed it to be a section of primal lunar crust, formed during the earliest history of the solar system, not obliterated by billions of years of impacts and lava flows. It was a key to many mysteries. Was the early lunar crust molten? Why differences in color and density between the highlands and lowlands? Nicknamed the Genesis Rock, it stands as a major clue in unraveling the formative processes of the moon, the earth, and the planets. Make this bag number 196 a special bag. Yes, sir. Joe, this crater is a gold mine. And there might be diamonds in the next one. Yeah, babe. Then we saw another practical use of television in lunar exploration. And Dave, uh, you're going to want to cinch up Jim's collection bag probably before you go much longer. It's coming uh, very loose there. Okay. It's coming uh, very loose. Let me do it right now, Joe, just don't, so we don't forget it. Roger, we sure don't want to lose that one. Help. I don't know what we'll do without you, Joe. Okay, Jim, let's get on a rover and head back to Hammer. It's nice to sit down, isn't it? Oh, it is. Okay, and we're on our tracks. Roger. And follow up home. There's sure a lot of neat rocks in uh, Dune. Too bad we can't spend some more time. On your next trip. Yeah, next trip, you're right. I can be seasick. <laughs> what do you expect uh, traveling on the Mari? They returned to the science station where Scott once more manned the drill to place the second heat flow probe and later to get a deep core sample. The difficulty in drilling was shown by Scott's hand, which would carry bruised fingernails from his efforts for several weeks after the mission. Okay, Dave, take heart. You've got just one minute of drilling left. Okay, we made a little money, didn't we? And over fifth. It was time to get back into the LEM and end EVA-2. The drill and attached sections were left in the ground for removal during the next day's traverse. On Earth, scientists pored over data from the television, from the astronauts' descriptions, and from the orbiting experiments. The 1,400 photographs the crew would return would themselves constitute a major scientific legacy. Lunar exploration was achieving a new maturity. We are now exploring to test new hypotheses, and the pieces were fitting together. One scientist, when asked why he didn't sit down and rest after an around-the-clock session, replied, I can't. I'm too excited. Oh, it's nice to be outside where you can stretch a little bit. Okay. Head to the site. Hey, I'll meet you up there. Now to the drill. We last left our friend. Oh, it's our friend, huh? Yes, it is. Uh, if we could just get our shoulder under that. Their first stop was at the drill they had left during the second EVA. This core tube was the deepest sample ever collected from the moon, perhaps the deepest we would ever get. Eight and a half feet beneath the surface, cutting through 58 distinct layers. This would not only tell us more about the lunar structure, but contained in this soil were traces of particles emitted by the sun billions of years ago which would give us a clue to the early years of the solar system. But now it was time to leave the core tubes to be picked up later and head west-northwest to the rim of Hadley Rill. And look at that rill. How about that? I can see maybe a 10 very well-defined layers within that unit. Hang on. Yeah. 
Alright. Yeah. Very soft, but... Then Scott and Irwin descended a short distance over the rim of Hadley Rill to get a piece of one of the large blocks thought to be lunar bedrock. It's a big rock there. Sure is. Let's go down and get the chunk of the bedrock here. Get a little closer so you get that big chip out of there. Boy, what a rock. Get ready to move out, Dave. Yep. They buckled their seat belts for the ride back to the lunar module. Oh, what a big mountain that Hadley is. Yeah, it's beautiful. The sun is really fierce. Oh, look at the mountains today, Jim, when they're all sunlit. Isn't that beautiful? It really is. By golly, that's just super. You know, unreal. Dave, I'm reminded of a favorite biblical passage from Psalms. I look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. But of course, we get quite a bit from Houston, too. After a stop to pick up the core samples, they returned to the LEM to close out their final traverse. But first, Scott would make history, canceling a stamp on an interplanetary envelope. I'm very proud to have the opportunity here to play Postman. What could be a better place to cancel a stamp than right here at Hadley Rill? Then a demonstration of a classic experiment. Finally, Scott drove the rover away from the LEM so that its TV camera could pick up a picture of the coming liftoff. As the spaceport Reisling would say, we're ready for you to come back again to the homes of men on the cool green hills of Earth. Thank you, Joe. We're ready to. But it's been great. 171 hours and 37 minutes after they had lifted off the planet Earth, Scott and Irwin would lift off its sister planet accompanied by a musical salute they themselves would provide from a small tape recorder on board. Rendezvous and docking procedures were flawless, right on the money. But their jobs were not over yet. They would spend two more days in lunar orbit gathering data from the experiments and photography. One more day around the moon than any preceding mission. On August 4th, they prepared to come home. But even on their last orbit of the moon, they had another experiment. Three. They placed in orbit a sub-satellite, the first ever launched by a manned spacecraft. It was designed to circle the moon for a year, measuring variations in lunar gravity 
the strength and direction of interplanetary and Earth magnetic fields, and the flow of charged particles in space. Tracking stations have acquired the satellite. Oh, very good. Then the burn to bring them back to Earth. But their jobs were far from over. 172,000 miles from Earth, Al Warden left the spacecraft to retrieve the 8,000 feet of film contained in the cassettes of the Experiment Bay cameras. Later, they would turn their X-ray spectrometer toward the newly discovered X-ray pulsars, those mysterious black holes in space. At the same time, in accord with the previous plan, an Earth-based Soviet observatory scanned the same areas visually to help derive a model consistent with both sets of observations. During the trip home, the X-ray spectrometer would observe seven X-ray sources and gather 50 hours of galactic data. Then, on August 7th, they looked into the fireball created by the heat of their re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour. And there would be a heart-stopping moment as one of the three parachutes collapsed. However, the landing system was designed to use two parachutes. The third parachute was an added safety factor. Today, that margin paid off. The success of Apollo 15 had been spectacular. The scientific results had been almost unbelievable. In the words of one scientist, a five-for-one mission. Yet while we rejoice in our success, we cannot afford to forget the sometimes painful efforts that gave us these achievements. Spacecraft Commander Dave Scott. I think many people have contributed to this pinnacle we've reached. Some have contributed more than others. And we know of 14 individuals who contributed all they had. And because of that, why well, we left a, a small memorial on the moon, about 20 feet north of Rover 1, in a small, subtle crater, there's a simple plaque with 14 names. And those are the names in alphabetical order of all the astronauts and cosmonauts who have died in the pursuit of exploration of space. Near it is a small figure representing a fallen astronaut. We went to the moon as trained observers in order to gather data, uh, not only with our instruments on board, but with our minds. And I'd like to quote a statement from Plutarch, which I think expresses our feelings uh, since we've come back. The mind is not a vessel to be filled, but a fire to be lighted. Thank you.